Mm. Let's talk about the Ministry of Labour. Mm. Uh, so when we get a next Labour government, hopefully mm. later in the year, who knows, uh, you will be building a new department in government in this country, the Ministry of Labour. Why? Mm. Why do we need one? Well, that's right. So it was a commitment in the last manifesto in 2017 that we, we would have a dedicated department for industrial relations, for workers' rights, for uh, trade union freedoms and, and, and so much more. Uh, it's, it's definitely understanding it, but I'm sure we'll come on to the detail in a second. And I think... It, it was a, a sim it wasn't just like a symbolic gesture from Jeremy Corbyn. He is, and I'm sure Keith will agree. Um, th you know, this is one of his flagship policies because we know, and you know, why do we need this? We know that the world of work is broken for most working class people. If we think of, uh, you know, young people at work, if we think of older people at work, uh, those people trying to get a mortgage, those people renting at work, everyone is in some way being exploited. There is very low worker confidence. We have underemployment. Uh, so I think, you know, one hour counts, one hour contract counts as being mm. employed in the employment figures. We have people who are working uh, too many hours but still can't make ends meet. And we see precariousness, a whole industry created around precariousness. We see people who are, you know, I heard of one McDonald's worker working about 40 hours a week, couldn't, like couldn't afford uh, the rent to, to even rent a room. Uh, the, the economy... I'm sure that's quite common, to be honest. 40 hours a week at McDonald's won't get you a room in it, London. It won't. It, it just won't. And not not even just, just in London. So... We've got to a point where the you know the government's national living wage or you know the, the rate that people are paid for an hour doesn't allow people to live even on a full time contract. But hours are at threat. People turn up to work and their shifts are can cancelled with no notice. And that person might have you know committed to a, a full day of childcare but have to go home because there's no work. So really, there is such little power now in working class people's hands um, that you know something like the Taylor review that was announced by the government doesn't even scratch the surface in challenging some of the fundamental uh, problems for, for for workers and and I think it is one about power and powerlessness we've seen um, for decades now the constant shifting of power into the hands of the employers uh, and you know I don't know about you Michael but I, I entered the workplace I started my career in McDonald's and there was no question that I would be, you know, I, I w the, uh, a trade union official wouldn't walk into McDonald's, mm. you know, mm. however many years ago it, it was. Um, I didn't have any conversations with my colleagues about being part of a trade union. It is now usual for our generation below and probably a generation above that they don't work in organised workplaces where you have like a rep there who's introducing you to the trade union upon your induction, where it's just part and a part and parcel in the fabric of the workplace. That doesn't exist. You know, if you asked many young people what a closed shop was they'd think it was like a shop that was hmm. shut you know what I mean like not that there is an, a, a compulsion a quite a requirement to work be in the trade union to work in a, in, in a certain uh, place so all of, all of this you know requires not just tweaks here and there all of this requires you know a huge legislative sh shift uh, but also us to be really confident, you know, I'm a, I'm a working class member of parliament, really confident that we can do this and that there is the appetite out there from working people who know that they are working longer, harder and for less pay. Hmm. So, so, I mean, I think across the board, uh, you can see a recognition now that workers have too little power. That's one reason why wages are so low and that's one reason why the economy is a little bit stagnant. Hmm. So as the Ministry of Labour, though, I was looking for the last time we had something called this mm. and it was 1968 so, it's, yeah. so 50 years ago we haven't had something called a ministry of labor uh, we've had things that do a similar function there. i yeah. think they were called a ministry of employment up to about 1980 and then the yeah. whole thing was abolished is is this a bit of a blast from the past right. <laughs> look can i can i you asked a question earlier i mean why do we need this, okay yeah go for it. Of labor? okay so i would say to you there are 32 million workers mm. in this country and what distinguishes this country I think from uh, most other countries in the world is that there is nobody in government who can speak for these workers mm -hmm. so the, the purpose of having a Ministry of Labour with its own Secretary of State its own government departments 
uh, it's all in a big civil service, is that we have a department uh, which can speak for workers, which can represent workers. We have a sector of states who can sit at the cabinet table uh, to uh, represent uh, workers' interests. And the point is very simple. I mean, as you said, you're right, we did have a Ministry of Labour in the past. And the question is, well, why did we have a Ministry of Labour in the past? And the argument from trade unionists in the past is that we needed a Ministry of Labour because business has its representative at the cabinet table. Farmers, agriculture has its representative at the cabinet table, but who speaks for workers? And that is the whole point. It's about giving workers a voice in government. And from a voice in government to a voice in industry, and from a voice in industry to a voice in the workplace uh, through their trade union. So it's very, very simple. It's not about connecting with the past, it's actually addressing contemporary problems. So just to clarify, you said most, most countries have one of these. Yeah. So, so Britain's exceptional in not yeah, having a Minister of Labour. Absolutely exceptional. So um, in, in modern terms, you look at the uh, great uh, European democracies, Canada has a Department of Employment. You, you said rightly that we had the Ministry of Labour. Uh, it changed its name in 1968, became a Ministry of Employment or a Department of Employment. Uh, so performing much the same function. But gradually, its role has changed as, you know, as governments, Tory governments in particular, have deregulated, stripped away workers' rights. They took away the department that was responsible for defending these rights. And what we're saying is that department needs to be reinstated. It needs to be at the very heart of government to represent workers' interests and to put workers' interests first. It should be the responsibility of all departments mm. of government That's to represent the views of workers. But in particular, it should be the responsibility of a dedicated government department with its own sector of state to make sure that these interests, the voice of workers, is heard very, very loudly uh, at, the, at the cabinet table uh, and uh, at the seat of government. Mm. So very simple, very straightforward mm. uh, and very progressive. What well, kind of technical question when I was looking up what might, you know, uh, correspond to this particular job, because obviously it doesn't exist in, in the current government. There's something called the Minister of Employment right, in the okay. DWP, right. the Department of Work and Pensions. Mm. Do they stand up for, for workers' rights and, and for people in the workforce? Or is, I mean, when I think of the DWP, I think of people okay. punishing poor people and forcing <laughs> them into work. I don't know if they also yeah. defend people in the yeah. workplace. I don't know. OK, yeah. and there, there is a minister in, in the, the business department which... Um, who is responsible for workers' rights or for worker interests. Uh, and with the best will in the world, in the sense, the f you know, it is a fact that workers' rights are represented by the Department of Business. The head of that department is the Secretary of State mm -hmm. for Business, Energy, uh, Innovation and Skills. So it's to that uh, minister uh, that, the, that, that the junior minister in that department uh, uh, is answerable. It is that minister, the business minister, who represents workers mm. in, in government. And what we're saying is, well, look, that's got to change. Mm. The workers' voice needs to be represented by a dedicated minister who can speak for workers at the cabinet and table. It will, so it'll look, be a standalone, yeah. <clears throat> a standalone depart, uh, department. And, and I think it's right, you know, the fact most people in this nation spend most of their time at work I think it's quite unbelievable that we don't already yeah, have this. Exactly. It's, I mean, it, it's almost unthinkable that uh, the thing that affects people's health, their mental well-being, how much money they've got, whether they can go on holiday, whether the bailiffs are at the door, that 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 hasn't got its own dedicated department uh, in government. Well, just shows you really what what mm. the government thinks of of of, of work and people. So it is extremely ex exciting, uh, and I, I think I've been on a journey because I think mm. those people that say, "Oh, you know, you're taking us back to the 1950s, yeah. 60s, 70s," mm. it all it is doing is trying to diminish the uh, the, the the potential for power mm. that this department can have, and say we don't want to go back to those old days. Well, you know, young people now quite quite often do not know what a trade union is. Uh, that there was once a department mm. that looked out for trade union interests. Look at that shift. <coughs> Look at how successful, you know, that Thatcherite ideology was. And we're just mm. going to meet that with equal measure.